Here we go. We going? We're live. All right, we got notes. Um, we can put our name on it. Obviously, that doesn't matter all that much. Blah blah blah. It says remember to memorize. And this time, similar to yesterday, we need to memorize this sign is y and cosine is x and tangent is y over x and we have our friends included this time and sine is very good buddies with cosecant so we're going to put one over y secant is one over x and cotangent is x over y i'll zoom in here because we, we got to be getting these okay And just like we talked yesterday on this piece of paper, we're not looking at the whole unit circle because we're trying to be a little bit quicker and we're trying to almost think about these as families, okay? Whether you're in the 30 family or the 45 family or the 60 family. And so let's take a second and let's see if we can go 30, 45, 60. And let's see if we can remember, recall, list all of the different angles in these different families. So, obviously 30 is in the 30 family. What else is in the 30 family? 150. Now, I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to put 30 in the first quadrant. I'm going to put 150 in the second quadrant. 210 and 330. Those are our 30 families. And why, why do those all work in a family? Because of the reference angle. Remember the reference angle for all four of these would be 30 degrees, which means all of their X and Y values are gonna be the same with some positives and negatives. Now, also there are radians, and let's go straight to the radians here. Are the radians, all of them divided by Three or four or six? Three. It's six. It does make you want to say three because of 30, but if you divide 180 by six, you get 30. That's why it's actually divide by six. So I need to make my marker a little bit smaller here. So that would be pi over six. Zoom in a little bit. I uh, can't zoom in anymore, I guess. Pi over six. 5 pi over 6, right? Almost 1. A little bit more than 1. 7 pi over 6. And then almost 2. 11 pi over 6. That's the one that's maybe the craziest because 11 just doesn't seem like a number we use very much. But all of those are in the same family. They all have the same x and y coordinate with some different negatives and positives depending on where you are. Okay, let's move over. Let's switch up the color. Let's go for 45. We have 45 in the first quadrant and 135, 225, 315. The radians are probably the ones that are a little bit harder, but actually, after we did it yesterday, the radians actually are kind of easy. Pi over four. Ooh, that's really skinny. Pi over four, three pi over four, five pi over four, and seven pi over four. They're all divided by four. They're all on the 45s. That works pretty nice. And we're finishing this up. I feel like we might be getting a little bored or a little restless, so let me hurry it up. 60, 120. Ooh, is that hard to see? No. Nah, that's not too bad. 24300. Let's get our radians again. They're not actually as bad as we would think. I'm going to switch to white so we can see it a little bit better. Pi 3, 2 pi 3, 4 pi 3, 5 pi 3. All right. If we can kind of get these families, if, these, if this feels kind of crazy, this is a great thing to have written down on the back of your paper or something that you can go and look at this. But You'll learn these really quick, okay? You'll learn these really quick. It, it'll, it'll start showing up. Okay, we're moving on. We did that yesterday. You can write it on your own. You don't need to copy me. Here we go. We're on black, we're on green. We'll make this bigger. All right. Now, we talked yesterday. In the first quadrant, everything's positive. 
I don't really like the way this is written on these notes, but whatever, it's good enough. I have a good strategy of, I also like to write tangent so that I don't have to keep calculating tangent. Tangent is y over x. So for your 60 family, that's gonna be square root three. For your 45 family, what's the tangent? One. And for your 30 family, what's your tangent? I'm not telling you this. Square root three over three, nice. Now basically today, we're gonna to be doing some questions with sines, cosines, tangents, but also cosecants, secants, and cotangents, which means all the same numbers are the same numbers, except for, they gotta be flipped upside down. We already did this on Wednesday. So let's just do a little refresher. If we have to flip square root two over two upside down, then that means that the two goes on top of the square root two. That means we rationalize it and we get two square root two over two, but then the twos cancel out. And so just a plain old square root two. Just, just, that's it, just a plain old square root two. And what about if we try to do our rationalizing for one over square root three over two? That's right, two square root three over three. So those are answers that will come up a lot for our cosecants and our secants, whereas the one over square root two over two is gonna come up a lot for our cotangent. All right, let's do this. Sine of 240. 240, is that a 30, a 45, or a 60? It's a 60, all right, 240. I'm thinking, what quadrant is that in? Quadrant three, is sine positive or negative there? Negative. And so now I just need to think of the sine of 240, that second y value, and it is square root three over two. Again, we're trying to speed this up, so I'm trying to not take quite as long when we go through these. Up next is the sign of negative 780. Honestly, gross, right? I don't really know whether that's a 30 or a 45. So I'm gonna, now, here's a little bit of a life hack. 780 is way negative, and 360 is not enough to make it positive. So could we do two 360s at once? Sure, we could do a double 360, which is a 720. This is a true story, guys. I was, uh, you know, growing up, going to high school quite a while ago. When I was in high school, it was unironically cool to play games like Call of Duty and to jump off a building and try to do as many spins as you could and then shoot somebody before you hit the ground. 360 no scope. 360 no scope. Unironically, 360 no scopes were cool when I was around. And we go to school, oh my God, I was playing the game and I jumped off. <laughs> right? And that was actually cool when I was a kid. And, uh, it was a big thing. So we would try to do 720s, double spin. What's well, a three spin? It's also kind of like 1080. Now, where else do we hear the numbers 360, 720, 1080? Video quality, right? If you're on YouTube. <laughs> and there's other places too, right? But I always think maybe YouTube quality. So if you're thinking, oh man, what is, what is 360 times three? 1080p quality. Sweet, so if we, if we add that, we're gonna get negative 60. Negative 60 is probably good enough for me. Right? I, I can now recognize which family this is in and which quadrant this is in. But if you wanna go one more, you could go one more. This is probably good enough for me. This is in quadrant four. And it's a 60 family, and cosine is one half in that 60 family. And in quadrant four, cosine is positive. All right, plus 360. That's gonna be the tangent of 120. 120 is in quadrant two. Tangent is negative in quadrant two. And tangent, this is 120, that's a 60 family. The tangent of 60 is square root three. Do we feel like we're, we're starting to connect those dots? We're almost being able to visualize that unit circle 
we might be able to start thinking about, oh, well, the square root three is the top one, right? I mean, and then down here is the square root three, really, right? All those things. What's up? So after I figure out the quadrant, all the quadrant tells me is positive or negative, right? Okay. Then I think about this number 120. I think about what family is that 120 in? Is 120 similar to 60? Is it a reference angle of 45? Is it a reference angle of 30? And 120 is right here. Well, just barely on the screen. 120 is in the 60 family. So then I think tangent of 60 and that's my little call your secret. I like to write that. Uh, is the square root of three? What do you got? Uh, wait, is the quiz timed? Is the quiz timed? Wait, the quiz is today. We're gonna take a quiz on Monday. Oh. Oh. Now we're gonna take a quiz on Monday. Is the quiz timed? Are you allowed to take two and a half hours on the quiz? No. But I'm not gonna pass it out and say here's five minutes. Uh, you're gonna have I don't know 30 minutes to do. It, it's, it should be very reasonable. All right, the cotangent of negative 240, I literally just did negative 240, right? So let, let's go ahead, I'm growling up here. Cotangent of 120, it's the same exact thing. It's quadrant two, and it's cotangent tangent. That means it's gonna be negative, right? They're, they're very similar. What's the only difference between tangent 120 and cotangent 120? They're just upside down. And what happens if we flip square root three upside down? One over square root three. Square root of three over three. That's right. And where do we see that square root of three over three? Right. Because remember, these are just backwards. So when we flip it upside down, it's kind of like we flip, anyways. It's all very repetitive, right? You, you start to find these patterns and you just kind of hold on to these patterns. Here we go, the cotangent of five pi six. Five pi six, I'm thinking, okay, that's quadrant two. Cotangent, negative in quadrant two. Five pi six, what family is that in? 30. So I need the cotangent of 30, which is the upside down of the tangent square root three. Because when I look at that, the little call your shortcut up here, which is ridiculous that I'm saying that, but whatever. This little shortcut of 30 looks like this. Ooh, but I need the upside down version of that, which is just a regular old square root three. Okay, we gotta pick it up. We gotta knock these four out. We gotta, we gotta go faster here. Cotangent of 19 pi fourths. Now, somebody help me out. What family is 19 pi fourths in? Well, it's in the 45 family, right? The 45 fam. Anybody in here in the 45 fam? Oh, okay. Hey, there you go. Okay, I got you. All right, so we're in the 45 family. I don't really know about 1945s, but I know for sure. We're a 45 because it's divided by four and everything that's divided by four is in that 45 family. Now, the other options now is the cotangent here is one, you know, the answer is gonna be one, but I don't know if it's positive or negative, right? In order to figure out whether I'm positive or negative, I need to figure out what quadrant I'm in. And this is where you have those kind of two options. You can do it spatially by thinking about the circle and you can count around, 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 boom, quadrant, whatever. Or you can do it algebraically by subtracting eight pi fourths, subtracting eight pi fourths until you get down to a number that you recognize. So let's do this one spatially because we haven't done that yet. Zero, this would be four pi fourths, eight pi fourths, 12 pi fourths, 16 pi fourths, 20 pi fourths, and we should be zero, four, eight, 12, 16, Tw not quite 20, 19 should be in quadrant two. Again, if you don't like that spin it around thing, well then it's time to do 19 pi fourths minus eight pi fourths is 11 pi fourths. And if that's too big, minus eight pi fourths is three pi fourths. And that, oh, nice, quadrant two, we should be good. Quadrant two means negative, the answer is negative one. 
All right, I said we'd go faster and we got even slower. Come on, come on. 210, quadrant three. Secant is buddies with cosine. Is cosine positive or negative? Negative. 210, 30. Nice job. 210 is 30. So we need the cosine of 30 upside down. Too much. <laughs> right? We're starting. It would be square root 3 over 2 upside down. 2 square root 3 over 3. So the, where did we get the 2 from? All right, so here's, here's what we're doing. For this question, we're in quadrant 3, we're 210. I, we all said 210 is in the 30 family. And my 30, which is right here, we know that the square root 3 comes first and then the 1 half, right? Yeah. Okay, secant is cosine's buddy, which means we need to take the x. But all we got to do is flip that upside down. So when we go to flip that upside down, we get 2 over square root 3, but we would rather write it with the square root 3 on top. So we write 2 square root 3 over 3. Okay. And then, of course, quadrant 3, negative, so that's why we chose negative as well. So we're, we, we figure out the family, we look at the picture, we grab it, maybe we have to flip it upside down. Okay, just make some room here. Secant of 495, what do you want to do first? What are you saying? Sure, we could subtract, but it ends with a 5. Right? Is it going to be 30 or is it, it is going to be in quad or it's going to be in the 45 family for sure. Okay? Which means it's going to be square root 2 over 2 except for secant upside down. So it's actually going to be square root 2. So our answer is going to be square root 2, maybe positive, maybe negative. We need to think about that 495. And that's not a number I'm super comfortable with. Minus 360, 135. What quadrant is that? Quadrant 2 and secant, which is cosine A smart trig class. It would be negative in the second quadrant. Cosine would be positive in 1 and 4. All right, very last one. Cosecant of 11 pi 6. This should be an easy question because it is on the standard position. This number, 11 pi 6, is not a weird number. And so we should just be able to get right into it, figure it out. This is in the 30 family. So I'm going to look at my picture. I'm going to look at the 30. And I want the cosecant, which is sine's upside down buddy. The sine is 1 half. The cosecant is 2. So my answer is going to be 2, except for maybe positive, maybe negative. This is in quadrant 4. And so quadrant 4, a smart trig class, well, only cosine would be positive, And this is a sine, so this would be negative. Negative 2 as our answer. Are there two questions on the top of the back? That's it? That's it. All right, now. Before we say that's it, that's it, we really don't have much else to do today. Here's what's going on. Um, we're definitely basically doing the same stuff we've been doing and the same stuff we've been doing. And we really haven't learned much new information. However, we're trying to go a little bit faster. We're trying to start to use our memory to not just stare at something, but to be able to recall information and to think about information. If you're thinking to yourself, Oh my God, where are these numbers coming from? They're just coming from the unit circle, okay? Everything we're calling on is just coming from the unit circle. When I'm doing the notes, I'm trying to show you less and really say, like, okay, let's think about it. How do we go through it? Our strategies are, we need to know what quadrant are we in, and we need to know what family are we in, right? If we can figure that out, then the answer is gonna be staring at us. Cool. We're all done.